Hello there, this is RD42, moin! We're gonna play some scrap mechanic and let's see what this beauty does. This is my fully scalable automated watering machine. Well, I think you've seen a lot of watering machines before, but this one is really, I think, the cheapest one out there and it's fully scalable. I think infinitely scalable. You can make this as big as you want. So, how do I build this thing? Let's get into it. For starters, I'm going to show you how to build this one-dimensional pump for a single row. Later we'll extend it to be two-dimensional, like this big one, but this is very useful for early game. To start your construction, place down the lift and choose a material of whatever you want and place down a 2x3 uh, two, three by five block. Then you'll add pipes at each corner. Two big pipes will do. And repeat it on the other side. Now you can add your water pump. Place it in the middle, facing sideways. We'll turn the mechanism later. Add two curved pipes at each side. Put one curved pipe facing to the middle again and on the other side you'll do a T-piece because we will need to add a sensor and it needs to face in the same direction as the pump does. Switch it to two blocks. Now we'll add more bearings, another T-piece and now for this example we go out one, two, three, four, five long pipes. Go down again, add two small pipes, a T-piece, and now we're going to do the same like we did on the pump itself. Uh, now we need to weld it again. Then you add more long pipes until the lift is in your way. It doesn't matter. Our middle has changed. Add it again. Now you have more space to work with. Add the long pipe and now you should end up here exactly in the middle. So add another small pipe, another T-piece, add two bearings and small pipes on each side. And this is how you build your pump. Now we want to build a frame our water cannon can move on. For this, just pick up your lift again, add five blocks wide and then just pull it out like maybe two times. And then you make it hollow in the middle. Just erase them again. Now you have a frame for your pump to move in. Now you just need to anchor this down somewhere. I like to place a pillar and just weld it up there. Like this. And now you can take the water cannon you've already built and place it down so it's like this and just hammer it once to test if it's working properly. It should only be able to move back and forth freely without too much friction and then it should stay at its place, well, more or less. Now you need a way to control it, so place down a controller and for this small pump a switch will do. Now hook up your switch, hook up your controller to one of those upper bearings. If you uh, choose this bearing like me, then you don't need to reverse the direction and it should work as intended. Don't forget to hook up your sensor to your pump so later we have something to activate it. Now I'll just mm, I think for this case 75 degrees will do and then just test how far it will move. You don't know exactly how big you made it. Okay this is too much. We need to reduce this just a little bit Okay, this is exactly what we want. There's just a little gap, 
So if we extend it outwards as far as possible, um, there's still no friction. So just press the button again and get your pump back. Now we don't have plants here, it's creative mode, so we just place down these pots. Those will do. Don't place the first pot directly under your cannon, otherwise it won't get watered. I'll just add a few example pots. In, uh, in survival mode you would have real plants, of course. Now, we want to put blocks directly above those pots. So our sensor can pick up the location of the plants, so it knows when to activate the water cannon. And now it should work as intended. It does. Perfect. Now you know how to build a one-dimensional, but I'm quite sure infinitely scalable, water pump. Alright, now you know how to build a mechanism that can drive this pump back and forth but you also want to be able to drive the whole thing you've already bid, uh, built also on another axis, so you can build as many rows of plants as you want. Alright, to do that we have to expand on the things we've already built, so let's get to it. To expand the watering machine you've already built, just remove the pillar, get your controller and your switch, we will add them again later. For now you just need this whole thing and now we're gonna add one, two, three, four blocks on each side and then one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four again. Now add a bearing here at the bottom and on each of those pillars and then add two pipes. These are gonna be guides for our whole sled later. Now, add a small pipe and another bearing on the bearing in the middle. Then add a T-piece facing up and down. Now we're gonna add a small pipe at the top, a small pipe at the bottom. Now another curved pipe at the top and another curved pipe at the bottom. Add two bearings again and then add big pipes. This is going to be one of the gears that drives a whole mechanism later. But I see I've made a mistake because this here will actually be um, directly under the track we are going to build later. So these two guides need to be one block further. Alright, now you just need to repeat the whole step on the other side. Now that we've built our gears, it's time to add something that can connect this whole, well, let's call it X sled, to the Y tracks. So it becomes one machine, so you can actually connect the water tank you build later to your water cannon. So you don't need to add any water containers on this whole moving parts and never have to refill it. For this, we're gonna extend this, just one block, and we are gonna add a long pipe, curve it, up again like a J and then we need to add a suspension. I like to use this sport suspension so we have a lot of freedom of movement you could call it. Now we go out and down again, add a bearing and now we want to go into this direction and this mechanism will move freely there's going to be no controller moving this whole thing, but the length of it will dictate how many rows you can add, so you can extend it later, but for now, um, don't go until you reach the end, but just stop a few blocks before, come back, 
add some more pipes. And mm, this needs to be one pipe less. So I'm just gonna add three small pipes. Okay, this is gonna be our last block. And this bearing needs to be right underneath these pipes. Okay, the same like this middle part of your gears. And just go one outside. All right. And this is where we're going to start our track. To build our tracks, we just have to remember that these pipes will be in contact with our tracks. So we can just go up here and right in between all those pipes, this will be our track. They are all touching the track. Okay. Now our track needs some teeth. This is going to be the starting position of our track. So now uh, this can be a little higher. So just for security, it will never go this way. But we are going to add some teeth here. This is where our gear will later um, yeah, be driven into to drive this whole machine back and forth. Well, one, two, three, four, five. We just go with five rows here. And this is going to be the end. Now, again, I just need to repeat this on the other side. All right. Now we got our tracks ready. But we need to do some final touches before we can get into the logic. We need to make sure the machine can't go wherever it wants. So we need to do those L things right behind our last tooth on each of the tracks. This will prevent the machine from going everywhere. So you are restricting the movement which is a good thing in this case. Then you need to add two more sensors. Those sensors will tell the machine where its starting point is and where its end point is. And we want this sensor to be able to know this right here, this is my starting position. I don't, can, I cannot move any further here. This is where I need to stop. So add one block right under this sensor. And there we go. Everything except the logic is done. All right, the funny stuff is done, I guess. Now let's do some logic. Um, please don't be mad at me. I'm not gonna explain everything I'm doing here. Um, there are a lot of very good logic tutorials out there and I really don't think I can do a better job. So I'll just slap down some logic gates and explain you what I'm doing, but not why I'm doing it. But just so you know, this is going to be a memory bit and these are just going to be two gates that uh, are required for the end stops. All right, so this needs to be a NOR gate. Also this one, NOR, NOR. And this needs to be an OR gate. The, these two gates will be AND gates. Now you need to connect this in a triangle. Connect also this as a cross. And those two also go to the AND gate. Now our controllers. This is forward. This is backwards. This means the machine is off. So when the machine is off and later we're going to connect a sensor to this one and the sensor is off, we want it to move backwards until the sensor picks up that it's in its starting position. When the machine is on, we want it to move forward until the sensor uh, shuts the whole thing off again. Now we just need to add two buttons. This is gonna go here and there. This is gonna be able to shut it off and this will 
shut it on. Now you should be able to switch between the states. You are able to do this. Okay, and this is a self-correcting memory bit. So if I shoot there, it will it's always gonna be off. It's not doing the weird flickering you will have sometimes. It's just self-correcting. It's not my idea. I stole this one. I'm sorry. All right, now we got our logic done and we can just take this and weld it onto our machine like this. This is very big now, you can make it smaller, but just so you can better see what I'm doing. Okay, now we have this end stop here. It will pick up this block when the machine has done its job. So we want this to switch off the machine. Then on uh, this side here, the other sensor, this is gonna go to the NOR gate. So when it's not in its starting position, it will constantly move backwards until it reaches its starting position again. And that's really all there is. Now you can switch it on, you can switch it off. And now we wanna upgrade our sensors. This is gonna be level two, this is gonna be level three. And not sensors, controllers, I'm sorry. And this controller here is going to one of those bearings on this side, also this one. And now the forwards controller also needs to be connected to one of the bearings on the other side, as does the backwards movement controller. And it really doesn't matter in which uh, way order, in which order you connect them, but uh, the orientation does of course matter. So you need to switch it around on this side. Now to the settings. Uh, oh no, so we need to add one last bearing. And this is on this side, the left one. No, the right one from, from here. Um, and you don't need to change the orientation if you've done everything like I did. So you just need to do this on 80 here. Uh, we go with speed three. Um, after this 180, we will move our water, uh, water cannon uh, 75 degrees. We'll do another 180 with both of the gears and then we do move our water cannon back. And this is going to be our main loop when the machine is moving forward. For the backwards movement, you just put them both to minus 180 degrees and you can also put the speed up to three and put it in loop. And now we're ready to test this thing. Let's pray it work. works without the Kraken. We don't want the Kraken to appear. Hi guys, sorry I needed to do some modifications to our machine off camera because there was a problem with it that uh, made the Kraken appear over and over again and the whole mas machine just spazzed out. But now I found the problem, it really didn't like that we put the whole logic in front of these pipes. There needs to be an air gap, that's why I always tell everyone to reduce friction as much as possible, always use pipes and Make sure any moving parts are only touching the blocks they need to touch, nothing else. Otherwise, the Kraken will appear and you don't want that to happen. You really don't. All right, so let's finally test this machine and see what happens. If you did everything like I did in the tutorial, I'm pretty sure it should work. All right, so let's see how we did here. All right, forwards movement. The pump is doing its thing, it doesn't return because it doesn't need to. We do another step and now we pull it back and it's watering again. Beautiful! All right, and there you have it. This is your fully, infinitely scalable, automated watering machine. It's only using one pump and if you want to make it bigger, you just need to add some more pipes. Um, extend the rails here or tracks, however you want to call them, and of course add some more farm plots. It really should work um, on any size because there's no, no bearings involved 
in these tracks. They really can be as long as you want them. I think at some point those bearings here and here will give up, but yeah, there, there, there are probably some workarounds you can do if you want to do the biggest farm ever built, but well, I leave this to you. Well, if you liked the video, I hope you had a lot of fun here and I'm very curious what you guys will build. So um, if you want me to do some more projects like this in the future, please send me your suggestions, leave me a comment, like and subscribe. I am really, really curious uh, on your creations and I want to improve this machine even further. So I hope to hear from you all and uh, yes, please, please comment on this. I need to improve and I need to learn wet much more. And now have some fun playing Scrap Mechanic and building your own infinitely scalable watering machine. This was Augie42. See you on the next video. Bye.